before the break, we were talking about the legacy of civil rights leader, uh, Congressman John Lewis. And Carrie, I will be speaking now with Amilka Sanatan, instructor with uh, the Department of Geography and a PhD candidate, Cultural Studies with the University of St. Augustine, and Cheryl Ann Seeley, advocate for racial justice and a member of United Philanthropy Forum's Racial Equity cohort and founder of the Trust Love and Program Manager for Grant Makers in the Arts and also a creative. Good morning. Wow. A mouthful there, Sharalan. Good morning, guys. <laughs> good morning. <laughs> good morning. Good morning. I'm happy to be good here. Morning. Good morning. You know, um, I was looking at all the footage of Congressman John Lewis, and he has such a legacy, and he was such a, a larger-than-life man, yeah? But his death came at a time when all that he fought for, going all the way back to the 50s and the 60s, is still on the table, guys. Um, how do you feel about that? I'll start with Amilka and then go across to Sharalan. Sure. Uh, thank you very much, Lisa. And um, in that way, I hope he can also rest in peace because death sweeps away the contradictions of living. The story of John Lewis is that a movement of the civil rights which achieved the Voting Rights Act in 1965, which was undermined by 2013, and then by the Supreme Court. And then we see how blacks in America, African Americans, have to struggle for dignity in 2019, and they passed the Voting Rights Amendment Act. Some are now calling for it to be named the John Lewis Act to acknowledge that this is the struggle of a generation. So hard-fought struggles, which was perceived to be won, or historical markers like Barack Obama in 2008, which appear to look like a step in racial progress. Mm -hmm. Each generation needs to fight to guarantee their gains. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And uh, uh, Cheryl, how do you feel about that? Yeah, mm -hmm. no, I would absolutely agree with everything that um, Amilka just said. And I mean, while yes, he passed away at a time where so much was left on the table, but he'd been fighting for so long and he has was around to see so many of the gains and successes that he was such a significant part of. Mm -hmm. So while he's not here to continue on the work that he was doing, he was such a prime example of what it looks like to fight relentlessly and to actually commit to justice for life. Yeah, let's talk about the fact that he passed during the current Black Lives Matter movement and the significance of his work for a new generation of activists, such as yourselves. Sure, mm -hmm. um, well, so as I just mentioned, He's been fighting for life. He's been an advocate for life. He got as involved as one could get, I would say. Um, from as young as age 22, he marched on Washington with Martin Luther King. He organized um, sit-ins, freedom rides, uh, the march um, in Sel from Selma to, to Montgomery, Alabama for voting rights when he was so young. And I think that because he was such an advocate um, for peace, but continuing to fight for justice, a lot of the younger people now who are a part of the movement for black lives and the black lives matter movement um, and ultimately fighting for justice for black lives um, will see that and see that he started from so young and he was able to make such an impact from such a young age and while at that time he was 22 but right now i'm seeing folks as young as 16 15 13 um going out in front of crowds and saying things that i wouldn't I don't think we would have seen um, 15, 20, 50 years ago. And so I think he's empowered young people to speak up and stand out um, and do so and, and, you know, do some of that, some of that uh, with, with controls, he, he calls it um, good trouble. Yes. And so I think that, yeah, I think that having him stand for that for, for so many years and, and he spoke with a lot of people who are part of the movement for Black Lives and the Black Lives Matter movement mm -hmm. um, and encouraged them. And while he wasn't, he didn't support the, the rioting and the looting, he did support the marching. He did support the peaceful protesting. He even said most recently, you know, everyone, we should be, we should be doing the sit-ins. We should keep marching, keep going, keep, keep pushing, keep putting pressure on um, federal and state governments. So I, I think he's empowered so many um, because he's such a visionary and has been um, yes. since the very beginning. Yeah, and you know, up to just a few weeks ago, he was there on the front lines in the Black Lives Matter march. So he was in it up until the end. Amilka, you know, John Lewis had a long life in civil rights activism. Uh, but how was he able, you think, to cut through the noise and get his messages through in terms of 
being so vis visible and inspiring to uh, p people all over the world? I think one of the first things is that John Lewis dedicated his best years of his youth to struggle, to justice, and having a society experience that, to see the sacrifice, to go in the face of brutality, but also educate and organize the youth. People talk about the Freedom Riders and Freedom Summer, of course, but you also have the Freedom School, which will empower young people, in particular African Americans, around their voting rights, thinking about political enfranchisement. But also, he offers us an example of a why we must have a political expression to our movements. Sometimes we don't like the political status quo and try to separate from it. His legacy is one that says one of the highest expressions of our cause is to get into office. And that doesn't mean when he becomes a, a politician, in this case a congressman for the Democrats. While that helped make certain guarantees for the Democratic Party around the African-American vote, what we saw, for example, he supported Hillary Clinton over Bernie Sanders, and that is very separate to how I identify with it. So the thing about honoring John Lewis and his cause doesn't mean we draw a straight line to a movement or a straight line to a man. The point of Black Lives Matter is that all youth have a critique of what happened in the past, mm -hmm. but also continue what happened before in some particular way. And as a young person right now in this moment, John Lewis makes me think about who do we remember and who do we forget and why. When we lift up Martin Luther King for his charisma, and he was a radical Christian, a brother, a radical form of Christianity, Christian politics, a sudden politics. Yes, he was different from X. And why was X speaking to his geography that way? What happened to Bayard Rustin, a gay civil rights leader? What happened to Ella Baker? John Lewis makes me think about these times. Who was lifted up? He was one of the young speakers at the historic march on Washington. It makes me become more gentle in critique to understand the immense sacrifice they made. So even though I have different views, I don't throw them away or discard them for that big sacrifice that I'm yet to even give in my life. Yes. I think of Amy Cezanne, departmentalization, departmentalization. I mix it up. I'm so excited. And then we have Condé's Independence. We have Eric Williams in Woodford Square, but we also have McCandle Dagger in Woodford Square. Yes. So I really wanted to register a point that this movement of black life is always diverse and we had many leaders john lewis is but one yes and he's an example of dedicating your entire life to struggle and why we must also celebrate that and continue the and you're speaking about many leaders john lewis and uh, martin luther king jr were larger than life personalities who captured the imagination of people all over the world Sherilyn, is there a role for that kind of leadership now and if so who do you see as taking up the mantle yeah, I mean, I think that's a really interesting question. And I was actually thinking about that before coming on. And I truly can't say that there's any one specific person because there are so many leaders um, who are fighting and pushing and protesting and on the front lines of the movement for Black Lives and the Black Lives Matter movement. Um, but I will say that John Lewis, he was someone who, he was a visionary. Right? He was a visionary. He was someone who was committed to what he believed in. He was committed to justice. And he never gave up on his dream of seeing a more just America. Yes. Um, so someone who embodies that in the way that John Lewis does. And you know, just like how back in you know, the 1960s to now, till now, John Lewis was one person, but there are so many people who are part of this and um, you know, in Congress, but also in the arts right? Writers, performers, um, and within business, like there, there are so many different entry points to this conversation about justice and liberation. And, and so I think it's, it's too limiting to really say who's the next, who's the next John Lewis, yes. but rather who embodies fully what John Lewis represents. I was thinking about that myself when I formulated the question and I was saying to myself, you know, these guys started because in those times you needed, you know, someone to sort of corral the masses, but now the masses are leading, you know, it's leading through the, as you say, even as young as 13, 14 year olds, you see so many young people out there on the front uh, taking, and people like you and Amilka really, who are sort of leading the charge with regard to activism right now. But you know, one of my favorite memories, I was telling Carrie uh, of John Lewis, was really seeing him actually just about three years ago, surfing the crowd of one of the talk shows there you guys <laughs> have in the US. I, I, I was like flabbergasted, you know, and, and I, I thought it spoke to the fearlessness of the man's character, that he would trust this 
audience of predominantly white, by the way, <laughs> members, <laughs> to just yeah. bodily serve him alive. I don't know if you guys saw that. All right, yeah. guys, we're going to have to leave it there. But I want to thank you so much, Amilka Sanatan, uh, instructor with the Department of Geography and PhD candidate cultural studies with the University of the West in the St. Augustine campus, and Sherilyn Seely, advocate for racial justice and a member of United Philanthropy Forum's racial equity cohort and founder of Trust Love and the program manager for grant makers in the arts, as well as being a creative girl. <laughs> <laughs> thank you thank you so much for having me thank you i totally enjoyed that interview thank you so much carrie